Hi, I'm Daniel and in this video I would like to give you a quick tutorial how to uh, wire up a huge control panel with two Ultimate I.O. boards made by Ultimark. I got a ton of requests about making a tutorial video like this one and uh, I have a brand new huge control panel over here. I just created it. This is a, a Ready Player One four player control panel with every feature you can imagine full rgb lighting and of course the two ultimate boards are already um, wired up inside so in this video i'm going to take you step by step how to wire it up how to troubleshoot how to flash the firmware um, how to uh, use win ipac etc etc it's going to be lots of fun so let's get started okay before we start let's open up the panel and you see a lot of wiring but it's not that complex so here is the first ultimate IO board and this is the second ultimate IO board and why do you need to use two just because there are not enough inputs uh, and uh, LED outputs on one of the boards for a huge panel like this one especially when you have special buttons like the uh, flipper buttons and the special menu buttons and the mouse buttons etc etc also we are using a trackball and a spinner so um, long story short you need two ultimate boards for a build like this so how quickly i will tell you how to connect them um, one of the boards is at the right side of the panel and it's super easy every device on the right side is connected to that board so usually I take player two and player number four um, for the right board. I will also connect the spinner or the trackball to one of the boards. Uh, player number one and player number three is on the left side uh, together with, uh, uh, with one, either the trackball or the spinner. So this is how to set it up. And be before we start configuring it, um, we will uh, disconnect number one so that only number two is plugged into the USB device of the computer and make sure it has five volts going through it. So I will quickly disconnect board one, disconnect the power. Oh, that's not the power, that's the stream deck. Let me get it out. So only board number two is connected to the PC. And we are behind the laptop and again make sure that you only connected IO board number two to the PC and I will take you to the Ultimark website first because we are Ultimark we are going to download the firmware that we need to give board number two a ID number two let's go to IPEX let's go to ultimate IO board. There's a lot of information on this page, but we need to go to, let me see, downloads. And first of all, you need to download Win IPEC. Uh, if you did not install that already, we will be needing that uh, later to map all the keyboard buttons. But for now, we are going to firmware, multi mode firmware. And uh, let me check. Download all multimodal, including ID number two. And this is what we need. So right click, save link as. And we will save it to my desktop. Save. Uh, can be downloaded securely, of course. Keep it. And there we are. Let's minimize the window. And here is the IPEC. Um, multi-mode firmware extract files and here we have it let's get rid of the 7-zip folder and here is the firmware and uh, as you can see um, there's a PDF there's some there are some files here and we are we are only interested in ID number 2 so now how to flash the firmware we are going to win ipac which is over here and we can 
stel that the board that is attached is the, uh, the ultimate IO board. Um, if there's no board attached, you will see a gray screen here. Then we go to File and we go to Firmware Upgrade. Important, uh, the first time an upgrade is done on this PC, please return this program as administrator. That is really important, I forgot to tell you. So uh, you need to run WinIPAC, so right click, run, right click again, run as administrator. Otherwise, your firmware upgrade will fail. And there we are again. Uh, we are in administrator mode, file, firmware upgrade. Um, after the driver has installed it, the firmware upgrade program will run and ask uh, for the firmware file. Are you sure you wish to upgrade the firmware? Yes, we do. And this will take a little while. And after we have um, flashed the firmware, installed the new firmware, the computer sees the second device as a second device. Uh, download and install this feature. This will take a little bit of time. Almost there. By the way, I'm not drinking a window cleaner. This blue stuff is actually a, a soft drink. I'm not sure what it's what it's called, but it has no sugar in it and it's really nice. Okay, it is installed. <laughs> now let's see if uh, Win iPack will pop back up. Right click, right click, run as administrator. Yes. And luckily our board is back and we will try again. File. Firmware upgrade. Do you wish to continue? Yes, we wish to continue. Waiting 20 seconds for board reset. There we go. Install. And now we can select a firmware file and I place it on the desktop and then we go to IPAC multi-mode and we go to ID number two, open it. And when this is done, we have completed the firmware flashing and then we can get to win IPAC and then we start configuring, uh, start mapping the right side of the control panel to begin with. And it's uploading anyway, so I will show you that I have some images here. Uh, setting up IPAC player 3 and 4, setting up IPAC for two players, and the XRCAD uh, default buttons and hyperspin controls. And the way uh, I always set up my control panels is in a XRCAD uh, default setting. And it's also the setting that um, uh, Chris uh, Christopher Shaw, um, who is um, making the, the hyper arcade system drives, is comfortable with. So my panels will always work with his hyperspin drive or with any hyperspin drive for that matter. And I will open one of the files for you. And then here you can see this is an, actually an IPAC4, but here you can see exactly how to connect it. So uh, this is player three, this is player four, and here you can see HKL, all the keyboard mapping. So we are going to use it later. It's almost done uploading. And there we are. Device is ready. IPAC Ultimate 2 is set up and ready to go. Perfect. We can close this screen and we can go back here. We don't need to be in administrator mode uh, uh, anymore. And now we can see that board attaches ultimate IO board number two. Okay, we are back in Win iPack. 
we uh, flash the firmware board is now recognized as um, ultimate board number two and um, first of all I would like to show you a small program which is called keyboard test this is an uh, evaluation copy and you can use it uh, free for 30 days it is made by Passmark you can just uh, download it but it's also on the Ultimark website and what this program does is really easy it's just a keyboard test so if I press a button you can just see exactly what the output button is for that key and um, and this is really handy and also for troubleshooting if you see a key that's that is bright red and you can see that it is stuck maybe your button is broken or maybe you um, wired the, one of the micro switches in the wrong way so it's really uh, a great program to have so you should download this first I will put the win IPAC uh, over here keyboard test I will make a little bit smaller well not too small let's put it mm, no let's put this one here this one here I'm used to have very large screens but this is just a small laptop and then I need where is it where is my here I need this image which is called setting up player three and four and this one I can put all the way to the right well let's toggle a little bit uh, in between I cannot not get it any nicer than this so as we can see here um, player four and needs to have a numpad um, uh, um, asterisk, numpad plus, numpad minus for the uh, joystick and end backspace del and page down and if I go to the keyboard first of all you see that uh, the joystick is doing nothing and the, um, the buttons are all doing different things let's clear it um, and why is the joystick not working this could be a problem maybe um, uh, you did not wire the ground correctly or you just forgot to connect it entirely and in this case it is connected to player three and don't get confused because this is board number two if you would only have one board you you would connect player four to player four but because we are using two boards uh, and a trackball and a spinner uh, player three is actually on the second board it's used for player four I hope this makes any uh, any sense um, so and you can see that it's uh, yellow right up left and down and yellow means that it's a trackball or a spinner and we are not using a trackball uh, we are using um, uh, a spinner um, the spinner is connected to the right side of the board so up for player th uh, three or four in my case need to be numpad asterisk so we go to switch we go to key we go to primary and we go to numpad let me get it numpad asterisk let's see if this works let's get uh, the keyboard test program and if I press up you can see exactly that it's numpad asterisk so now do down which is numpad plus down we go to switch we go to key and we go to numpad uh, plus here we go and then we go to left and this needs to be numpad, uh, for, uh, numpad uh, slash so switch key numpad slash and then we go to right and this needs to be numpad minus so switch key numpad minus here we are then we go to the four buttons we are using so button number one is it should be backspace and in our case let's go here in our case this is um, uh, right control which is not okay 
So now we need to actually find um, which of these buttons is uh, mapped as um, uh, uh, right control and uh, switch one is mapped as right control. So this one was easy to find and it should be backspace. So let's set it to backspace switch two uh, is delete. So we will make it delete. Uh, where is delete? Let me see. There is delete. And number three needs to be end. So we go to end. Here we go. And number four needs to be page down. Four needs to be page down. Scroll up, uh, page up, page down. Okay. Now we go back to the keyboard program. Let's clear it. And let's check if player four is configured correctly. So up, which is numpack asterisk, down, it's numpack plus, left is uh, uh, slash, right, uh, yeah, numpack uh, minus, backspace, delete, and, and page down. So um, this is correct. Now we need the coin and the start um, button. So start for player four is nine. Is that uh, true? Uh, no, that's not true. Start for player four is uh, zero, I think, and coin is eight. So is it zero or O? Oh? I think it's zero. Let's let's go for, let's go for zero. So player four uh, coin. Let's let's see what it's mapped. So player four coin. This is the escape key, and now we need to find um, which one that is. It could be one of these or one of these. So let's go to escape. Let's see if we can find escape tab. Escape. It could be this one. To be. Unfortunately, there is no feedback if you press a button inside the Win iPad software. So uh, it's escape. If I just do a quick test and put it to Z, let's see if this one now gives me a Z. Exactly. So this is the right button and it should be zero. Let's go to zero. Perfect. Now we go to player for start which is eight, need to be eight, but now it is tap. So let's go here and it must be this one. So two A and we need that to be eight. Here we go. And let's see if it works. So this needs to be zero. It is, and this needs to be eight. So player four is completely uh, configured. Um, now, before we go to the other players, let's check uh, the trackball or the spinner, which is always a little bit more difficult. Uh, in this case, we have the, uh, the spinner attached and we can directly try it. You can see that it is um, working and now it's controlling the, uh, the Y axis. And I'm not sure, but I always have it on the X axis. So just um, um, click on the yellow tab here, click on X, and now it will be uh, uh, operating the X axis. I'm not sure if this is the correct way uh, to do it, but uh, I usually have it um, uh, on the X axis. So this is working also. Now let's um, go to player two. Let's go to keyboard test, player two. First, let's see if all buttons are working. All buttons are doing something. And now we will be closing this one and we'll be opening player two. There we go. Make it a little bit smaller here. 
put a win I pack. And there we go. So player two up needs to be R. So and player two up is now programmed as R. So let's see if this is true. No, it's not. So um, I wired this one differently. So it's giving me a G. Well, let's see where the G is. So ah, so I wired it uh, incorrectly, which is no problem at all because I can switch it here. So this is um, uh, uh, actually uh, the G, and this is. Um, and this must be the R. So let's go to R. And now player two is giving me the R. This is correct. Now let's see if I press down. It is the F. And it should be the F. So this one is correct. If I press left, it's giving me a D. This is also correct. And right should be a G. And this is, of course, incorrect because I wired it incorrectly. So the R where are we here? Should be a G. And now, if I'm correct, the right is a G, down is F, up is R, and left is D. So this is about the control. Let's go to um, the buttons. And just for your information, you can see a lot of buttons here. Um, this is button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have a block of six buttons and two extra buttons. And if you do it like this, this is really handy for uh, maybe Xbox and also PlayStation setups. So I always have an eight button configuration here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's see, button one, it's giving me an A and this is correct. Button two should be an S, this is also correct. Button three should be a Q, it's also correct. Button four should be a W, this is correct. Button five should be E, and this is incorrect, this is an I. So let's go to switch one, two, three, four, where are we? Five, switch five, it's set to I, but we want it to be uh, E. So let's do it like this. Now we have an E here, then switch six is an, um, I think, you call it in English an open column, I'm, I'm not sure, but button six um, will be a open column. I hope I uh, pronounce it correctly, otherwise you can uh, put a comment uh, uh, on the video. So this is six, and then we go to uh, seven which will be a closing column let me see seven this will be a closed one and then we go to eight and this should be six okay let us test so we have a s q W, E, open column, then we have, oh, let's go in the program again. We have six uh, for uh, button, ah, I made a mistake here. I switched this one because um, this is button seven and this needs to be the closing column. So let's go to button seven. Oh. This needs to be the closing column, and this needs to be six. There we go. So six, seven, and this is number 
8 and this is the enter key why is that ah so this is also a wiring um, uh, uh, thing I connected um, uh, this run so let's find where the enter is it's here and um, it should be 6 like this so closing column and 6 so player 2 is correctly done now let's disconnect board number 2 and connect board number 1 and then we will be doing players 1 and 3 and we will be taking a look at the mouse buttons and the special buttons uh, actually one of the special buttons is attached to player 2 let me check which one it is it's this one and this is the pass key and I always uh, let's see it's now space and let's find where this one is let me take a look inside where is it going it's the yellow one and it's going to somewhere player one check it and we need to do the flight stick of course so let me see where the space is space this one so the pass key should be P actually I always have it on P so let's see if the pass key is working yeah this is doing P so let's check the flight stick and it's uh, doing something let's see if I go up it goes up down is not correct down is left right is correct and left is down so it's almost correct so let's reconfigure this so down I go to uh, so let me think a little bit so down is left so player one should be down Uh, where are we? Where are we? It is so small. There it is. Down. Down and left. Should be here. Let me get it. Uh, where is it? Where is it here? It is left. So left, right, down, up. This is working. Let's see if the buttons are working. This is six and this is P. This is of course not correct. So let's see where it is going. These are connected here and they are going to where are they going to? Actually, they are going to. Let me see, player one B. I think. Let me check. Let me check. Player one. B. P and six. Yeah, exactly. So let's say that this is button one. This is now a P. And what we want is to uh, have that set to left control so left control uh, where is that um, look left control 
And then we have this one, which is 6, and we want to put it to left alt. Left alt. Bum, bum, bum. Left alt. No. This is set to exactly so. And this is a fun fact for you to know that you can just uh, connect or map buttons to simult simultaneous inputs. Uh, how do I explain that? So player one button one is um, mapped to left control. And in my case, um, it's also mapped to the flight stick uh, first um, button. And this is really handy. So you can have mul multiple buttons map the same output. Um, let's see here. I do have two pinball buttons. And they are mapped to left control and Z, and let me check for pinball. We want the right pinball button to be, I think, player two, switch one, which is an A. So this control, we will be taking a look where it is connected. And it's the yellow one and it's connected to player two somewhere or no player one somewhere let me find it actually it's connected to player one button one let me check where that is switch one it's this one and we want it to be a it doesn't really matter because the pinball buttons you can always configure in the pinball game. So now it's A. So my right pinball is A. And later we'll set the left pinball button to be switch 1. And um, button 2, which is a Z now, uh, um, can be the nudge button. Uh, but we can do that later. So let, let's see. Did we do everything correct? Uh, we forgot the coin and the start button for player two. And let's take a look. The coin, the start button must be two. Let's see if it's already there. Yeah, that's correct. And the coin button here is six and it needs to be four. So let's go to player two, player two coin, and we put it on four, four and two. So this is completely done. So the right side is completely done. The spinner's working, flight stick is working. Let's disconnect this board, connect the first board and quickly run through the entire left side of the panel. And this concludes our video for today. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, put them in the comments and I will try to comment on them uh, myself. Not always that quick, but uh, I'm reading them all. So thanks again and see you in the next video. Bye.